Hello everybody, welcome back again for a little bit more Yang Tai Chi. We're gonna go ahead and cover today the last four energetics uh, in the Yang style Tai Chi system. And those are gonna be plucking, splitting, elbow, and shoulder, okay. So these four energetics, right, uh, I find they're a lot easier to practice dynamically sometimes. So we'll do a little bit of dynamic practice with it and we'll do a little bit of slow practice, right? We'll start with that, gently break it down, uh, look a little bit more in depth into what that is, and then come back uh, and do a little bit more dynamic action with some of these movements, okay? So let's just get a little bit of the loosening up first. We'll do some waist twisting to start. There's a lot of twisting that happens through these last four energetics. And let that hand come all the way up toward the shoulder. And slowly let it relax down. We're gonna do a couple of just one side rolls with that shoulder and that waist. And a couple back the other direction. It's like you're trying to touch your elbow to the ceiling. And we'll do a few times on that other side. Forward rolling first. Important to keep the shoulder connected into the body as you roll. Use a lot of waist, much less shoulder. And we'll go back the other direction. It's again like you're trying to reach that elbow up towards the ceiling. Twisting, extending. All right, one more time. Bringing the hands into that center. We're gonna twist one direction, twice on each side. Have a little bit of a double pump sort of feel, double pump kind of action. Three more. Last. All right. Come back. I'll loosen up those wrists a little bit here. And back the other direction. All right. We're gonna go into our plucking first. All right, main thing that's really important with the plucking is the hands are gonna stay pretty much right here in front of the shoulders, right? So while the hands may have that rotation, you have that rotation through the forearm here, as you switch into that plucking action, you're not really plucking in terms of pulling the arms to the side of your body. You really wanna utilize your waist to do that plucking action. So I'm gonna do it from facing to this corner first. All right. And what we wanna do is we're gonna turn the hands into this position here where we're right in front of my shoulders, sit down, back to that other leg, and we're gonna twist from that waist. All right, so you should see my arms and my hands are still right in front of that shoulder. One of the tricky parts of this is try not to let that hip turn in. You really wanna make sure you square up the hip and keep it relatively in that direction as you twist, right? So you have a little bit of opposition through the motion. So we're 
forward hand palm up, back hand palm down, twisting back. Okay. Now we can just catch to the front and come back again and work on just that twisting action as one motion. a few times each side, making sure the arms are staying relaxed with the body, letting the waist do the work. Okay, let's change to that other side. All right, then I'm looking for that forward stance to this side, to this corner. Remember forward hand, palm up, rear hand, palm down making those two fists, letting the hand sit in front of the shoulder, and then twisting with the waist to bring you back. Catch. Just a few times on this side. Keep your body really straight. Work with anchoring with that hip. Got one more time. Okay. One thing to be aware of is even though I talk about anchoring with that hip, we really don't want to uh, hold it so tightly that it has no mobility. You still do need your hips to be able to open and close a little bit, all right? So when I'm doing that rolling back action or that plucking action, you'll see my rear leg should move back with my weight a little bit, okay? Which means my hip is opening up as I sit back and through that pluck, all right? If my knee tucks this way inward, all right, this is gonna keep my body from getting the linking that I need to actually exert force through this motion. So we really want to keep that rear leg open and you may feel this tendency of wanting to pull open you just have to really check out on this hip and this knee. The, those pieces falling forward are indicators that you're losing your anchoring, right? So we're anchoring through this side here, okay? All right, let's do a little bit of splitting now, okay? Splitting, once we've plucked, we'd go into a hold the ball position. So we're gonna go from that hold the ball and split and open. All right, when you think about splitting, you can think about the hands moving away from each other. You can think about the elbows moving away from each other. And you can think about the shoulders. And even all the way into thinking about the two halves of the body moving away from each other, okay? If you can get the whole body to move apart like this, then you're really starting to fully explore your splitting. In the beginning, it can be really easy to become focused on just the hand pulling apart, all right? and in some cases, if you work on your splitting and you find your hand flicking back behind that elbow, these will start to put some pressure on your elbow and push pressure on your shoulder. We want to avoid those things. We really want our hands to be splitting apart with the elbows staying in front of that body. So we're going to split, all right? And as you watch, when I go through this, my waist is also opening. So it'll appear as though this hand here, my left hand, is just dropping slightly through the motion. I'm not really trying to pull it apart like this, right? I'm mostly, once again, using my body to do the action. So we'll go one, all right, and we'll just turn. We'll alternate sides on this one. Two, alternate side, three, That rotation is just ever so slightly drawing me forward. So I do end up back up in a forward stance, all right? But I would watch out for going too big with this motion, 
All right, if I want to go real slow through it. Very small motion. Sink into the split, okay? There's your splitting, all right? One thing that also might help you a little bit with developing this splitting is take the emphasis away from the outside of the arm, right? Don't worry about hitting something or pushing something away from you, but rather think about the space between the elbows, right? This interior space growing, all right? Allowing that interior space to grow will actually give you a lot more strength on the outside of your lines when you start to move, okay? Now we'll move into some of the more obscure energetics, right? The, uh, the elbow energetic and the shoulder, all right? The elbow, this one always uh, gets people a little bit uh, mixed around. It's because of the way that this transitions in our series of movements. So after you've done your splitting, just to walk you through those steps slowly, what I'm doing is I'm extending that hand out a little bit more, drawing that elbow back. So I'm trying to make my line as flat as I can here, right? From my palm all the way through across to my other elbow here, okay? So I'm trying to make that line as flat as I can, all right? Without letting my hips match my shoulder. So my hips should still be facing toward the direction I'm moving, which in this case is this right side corner. So I've just split, I'm opening, flattening out my torso. And then here, because I have this twist bound through my body, when I release, my hand can just fall back in to meet my elbow, okay? A lot of this is learning about elbow positioning, okay? So wherever I want to go, my elbow doesn't really need to do very much work. It's actually mostly, once again, from my core of my body moving, and that's radiating out through my elbow. And we open and let it fall together, right? And if you want a little bit more energy through the movement, don't think about swinging hard. Just think about what it's like to push a swing, all right? You just catch it and guide it a little bit further, a little bit faster through the motion. So as you feel that sinking, you're gonna feel it come together like this, all right? And some styles you'll actually see this sort of practice with the elbow of almost like a little hop, all right, to get your body to sink and then meeting with that elbow, all right? Now we wanna be able to do that without making it as obvious, all right? So we're lengthening out and flattening out, falling back together. I'm just gonna drop that hand and bring it up to lengthen out. Just working elbow to elbow. You think about, find that twist. When I step, I'm keeping my weight back. I'm working on that twist to the body and letting myself fall into the front as that twist undoes. Okay. And so this is our, just a repetitive version. You can also do it like this. And this may be a little bit easier for some of you to feel is you can go open, close. The other thing that we can look at is um, when you look at it in sequence, there's much less settling back and a lot more just moving forward into the motion. So if I'm doing this in the sequence here, a pluck, split, right? My weight's still forward on my right leg and then I'm gonna release and fall in, okay? So you'll still kind of see this anchoring Settling, I'm only settling back with one side of my body now though, keeping my way forward and then letting myself fall back into it. Okay. So many ways to practice this version, all right, this uh, elbow energetic, all right? 
Let's go ahead and go into a little bit of the shoulder energy, and then we'll come back through. We'll go through all of them together in sequence, um, and then I'll wrap up by doing uh, the whole eight energies all together one more time. You can go back and watch that video uh, once you've practiced through this. Okay, so shoulder, the thing that usually messes people up on this one is direction of movement, okay? So this is a lateral motion, all right? And we wanna keep the body really straight as we go through that motion. So when we talk about the shoulder, we're really talking about uh, the part of the body that runs all the way down the side through the hip, through the leg, okay? So this whole plane of your body is moving over or moving laterally, all right? Sometimes they say leaning, all right? And it appears to have a lean to it, but really I'm standing straight up and down and I'm just letting myself fall in this very vertical space, all right? Uh, falling laterally, keeping everything really vertical, okay? So we come through, all right? So you can work just side to side, all right? This is probably the easiest method, all right? Sitting one hip over to the other hip. Just bring it together, step it apart. And right now I'm just staying in place, moving side to side through that movement. Thinking about my vertical body, I want to really avoid things like this end look of leaning or this end look of kind of pitching, all right? And now we can take this exercise and we can move it into a slight forward moving exercise by just taking about the distance of my foot, right? I'm just gonna move one foot up and across, all right? Up and across. So I'm somewhat in line with my toe coming over to this side here, okay? I'll open my foot slightly, coming just about in line with my toe, and that'll give me a good angle for when I wanna re-rotate into a forward stance. A really small motion forward. Okay, do one more time. All right, really thinking about that full plane of the body moving, all right? And just as I talked about the inside being important here to move you, the oppositional side is important to move you here. So I wanna think about my left side moves over into my right side to move me over and across, all right? Actually wanna hit my target with my opposite side of the body rather than the side of the body that it's close to. Okay, good, all right. So let's go ahead and put them all together, all right? Put them all together one time, um, and you can go back once again, like I said, and watch through some of what we've done already in the past, uh, and I'll also take you through really briefly uh, some quicker versions of this, all right? Let's go through that sequence first, and then we'll come back to the quicker versions, all right? So, just this set of four first. We'll go one time through it, facing you one time, facing away, all right? I'm gonna start from my pluck, split, elbow, shoulder. Now here I can come right into my pluck, pluck, Split, elbow, shoulder, okay? We do that back the other direction. Plucking, splitting, elbow, shoulder, plucking, splitting, Elbow, 
and his shoulder. Okay. So you just work on those second four on their own, or you can do them together with everything. You can go one time through everything together. We're going to go ward off to the corner. Roll back and press. Sit back and push. Now we come into a pluck. We go into a split. We come up through elbowing. Step into shoulder. Now, I like to catch sometimes and come back. There's a lot of ways to transition back through. All right. We ward off. Roll back. Press. Sit back. Push. Now, grabbing, plucking, splitting, elbow, and step through shoulder. Once in the other direction here, going ward off first, roll back, pressing, pushing. Plucking, splitting, elbow, shoulder, ward off to the corner, roll back, press, push, grabbing, plucking, splitting, Elbow and shoulder and coming back up and covering. Okay. There's so much you can do with these movements, even though there's only eight of them, you can really play with them a lot, right? Energetics, uh, you know, something I like to say is that when you're practicing your energetics, we have these body forms, these body shapes that we utilize to really emphasize the energetics, but really you don't need a specific motion to work on any individual energetic, right? As if you take something like an elbow, right? That idea or that feeling of positioning, right? You can work the elbow here. You can work the elbow here. You can work the elbow on that reverse end, you can actually work it over the top too, okay? You can work it on a lot of different angles, right? So all this is all coming from that same place of how am I utilizing this open closing sort of motion to control where this location of this elbow is at, okay? And you'll notice I'm not swinging big or pulling back or anything like this. It's just my elbows here, right? And then I twist. Boom. Right there. Okay. All right. So, as I said, we're going to go through it one time real quick. Some fast versions for you of those last four energetics. And then we're going to call it for today. So, plucking. Okay. Plucking, right, probably the easiest way to work this as a fast exercise is just stepping, right, moving forward and cutting that line once again, utilizing the body, pump, right? Because that hand is already up in that ready position. Once you've cleared, that hand will naturally start to rise from that momentum, and you can just pluck it back down to the other side. All right? So just plucking, plucking, plucking. Okay? And you're really working that twisting, counter twisting. All right. If you want to give yourself a good workout, go walk up and down like that a few times. All right. And go through all these movements uh, as line drills or repetitive drills. Okay. Uh, splitting. All right. Same idea. We split, turn, split. Okay. 
but we're working on this motion. So I can either walk forward just like that, or I can do it in repetition in place. So we're like working a rubber band. Spring, 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 spring. All right, same thing. Other side. These exercises I encourage you do on both sides of the body when you're working it, okay? Of course, as always, gauge yourself, right? How much energy, how much effort you want to put into each one, all right? The elbow, right, as I said before, we can just work on this open, close. Not power, right? Just a little bit of energy, a little bit of speed. I would encourage go to full range of your motion for this, all right? But in application, you may see it very abrupt, right? Very short, just in place, okay? We like to practice these energetics so that we can utilize them from any place, any range, right? Whether we're close or we're far. All right, last one, we're gonna do that shoulder, right? The shoulder, right? I can either just work on sort of that double pump action, right? Or you can work on gliding, right? I kind of like the skating version of it, right? <sighs> Make sure your body meets before you free that opposite leg, okay? So that you're coming to that balance point. <laughs> Where's your stopping point before you go into your next thing? This one's fun because you can take it all different directions. Something to play with, all right? Cover, sit, cover, sit. All right, and so on and so forth, all right? And you just kind of keep playing with those, all right? So that's gonna be it for us today. Um, up the work on these, they are some of those things, some of these simpler exercises are things that are very easy to go. Okay, I learned it. I'm just gonna throw it into the back of my trunk of my brain. And then, you know, if I need it, I'm just gonna dig it up later. But really, if you spend a lot of time, a lot of energy, you look for the nuances and the movements, you're gonna give yourself a whole lot of appreciation for these things that you get in the beginning of your practice, okay? And you just take this stuff and you reapply it back out to the rest of your form, the rest of your movements. Every single movement should have elements of these energetic principles, okay? So keep an open mind, keep on working, and we'll see you on the next one, all right? Have a good night, everybody.